It's officially Disney Plus Day 2022, and we've just been dropped the brand new Simpsons short, Welcome to the Club. As expected, it's loaded with great Disney cameos and references, so I'm going to break it all down. Before I do though, don't forget to join the conversation down below and let me know your favourite part of Welcome to the Club. While Welcome to the Club is brimming with appearances from Disney characters, this short certainly isn't as extravagant as last year's, The Simpsons in the plus anniversary, which many viewers scorned for being nothing but an elaborate Disney Plus commercial. I mean, anyone who made that complaint probably missed the joke altogether. Regardless, this new one is a simpler and honestly more thoughtfully created short. It begins with Bart and Lisa entering an enchanted castle, where Lisa is about to be inaugurated as an actual Disney princess. While the castle isn't one from any particular Disney movie, it is reminiscent of the iconic Disney castles we all know and love. It's worth noting that Lisa's princess dress here is very reminiscent of the one she wore at the end of Plus Aversary. Though not exactly the same, it shares many of the same elements. As the two Simpsons discuss her inauguration, they look upon statues of current Disney princesses which adorn the castle. Of course, we have Cinderella from 1950's Cinderella, Elsa from 2013's Frozen, and Tiana from 2009's Princess and the Frog. Interestingly, these are the only three princesses that get a semi-appearance here, though we do get a mention of Snow White later in the short, and even see an abandoned generic princess who has been shunned by Disney after coming of age. She clearly is, however, inspired by Snow White. We do also get to see one other the Disney princess a little bit later, but in an older form. As Lisa determines her fate, weighing up pros of reality versus princess life, a monstrous shadow appears behind Bart, and makes a growl, convincing her to be a princess. While this isn't any particular character, it's clear that the body shape and horns, while representing a devil-like figure, could also be a slight nod to the design of Beauty and the Beast's Beast. Lisa runs into the castle and to the enchanted staircase, where she looks to her glistening enchanted slippers. Very much a reference to Cinderella's glass slippers, but also, given their colour, perhaps the ruby slippers from 1939's The Wizard of Oz, despite, of course, it not being a Disney movie, though Disney has tackled the Oz IP a number of times before. After locking her in the castle, which turns out to be some kind of ominous dungeon, Bart reveals himself to have been Marvel's Loki in shapeshift form all along, explaining that horned shadow. Loki, voiced by his MCU actor Tom Hiddleston, notes that he's making a contractually obligated appearance. This is probably just a slight gag, though this appearance could quite literally have been a contractual obligation in his Loki series contract. Hiddleston has previously portrayed Loki in another Disney Plus Simpsons short, The Good, The Bart and The Loki. Loki additionally appeared in Plus Aversary in a dialogue-free role. Loki grumbles briefly about Disney merchandising and then disappears. Next up, Lisa falls into an underground dungeon where she's soon to come face to face with Disney's most ruthless villains. Firstly, she's approached by a shadowy figure who she initially mistakes for Snow White. It however soon reveals itself to be Snow White's evil queen in the form of the old beggar woman holding the poison apple. She even remarks about having just poisoned Snow. Then at once all the other villains come slinking out of various tunnels, which are adorned by a large sign that reads, Disney Villain Land, the crappiest place on earth. Earth, an obvious reference to Disneyland, which is often touted as the happiest place on Earth. The villain in the logo also appears with a trademark, a sly dig at Disney's highly lucrative villain's IP. Amongst the other villains that appear throughout the short are, of course, Ursula from 1989's The Little Mermaid, Cruella de Vil from 1961's 101 Dalmatians, Hades from 1997's Hercules, Scar from 1994's The Lion King, Captain Hook from 1953's Peter Pan, 
The Queen of Hearts from 1951's Alice in Wonderland, Maleficent from 1959's Sleeping Beauty, Jafar from 1992's Aladdin, and of course, Car from 1967's The Jungle Book. It's also worth noting that most of these villains also appeared in the Plusiversary short from last year, and they're appearing here again in the exact same designs. The villains attempt to coerce Lisa into becoming a villain in true Disney style break into song, with Ursula remarking, Villains get to sing diabolical tunes, which become drag show favorites. A reference to not only Ursula having become a target for parody in many drag shows, but to Ursula having been inspired by world famous drag queen Divine in the first place. The prince from Snow White also makes a brief appearance in a magic mirror, as Captain Hook sings about how ladies prefer a man with a hook before slicing off his arm. The song features various gags which see Lisa dressed as a witch, with the various villains convincing her to turn to the dark side, a clear parody of the villain origin songs we've all come accustomed to from the classic Disney animations. Lisa questions why she'd want to be a villain when they always die, to which Ursula responds, It beats living happily ever after with some boring guy. At which point, a troop of generic Disney princes, along with Snow White's prince and Cinderella's Prince Charming, come storming onto the scene. The troop breaks into a fairly scathing song about the dull as linen Disney princess, which makes mention of how pretty and perfect they are, but also how dumb they are. One line even mentions how kids leave to get snacks every time they're on the screen. The song also makes some great commentary about the questionable nature of their actions over the years, with one even even remarking, We seem to kiss unconscious women. Of course, a reference to Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, which both depict the princes doing just that, something which has come under fire in more recent years. Another line mentions how the princes screw up the world's affairs while the princesses stay home to pump out airs. At which point, we see a hilarious image of Sleeping Beauty's Aurora giving birth to her fifth child as the three good fairies either assist or coddle her previous children. The song rounds out with the princes telling Lisa she's better off with Doc and Sneezy, with the two dwarfs making a brief appearance. Then Mickey Mouse breaks through the back wall and scolds the princes for forgetting about him, as Minnie watches on. The princes immediately apologize and choreograph themselves into a silhouette of their narcissistic boss. I'm actually surprised just how scathing this entire short has been allowed to be. Not only the prince's song with its social commentary, but the mention of accountants and merchandising, the mention of the crappiest place on earth, the criticism of Disney princesses usually being underage, and the not so flattering portrayal of a behind the scenes Mickey Mouse. I think it's all so brilliant and goes to show how Disney have actually allowed the Simpsons to stay inherently themselves while under the Disney banner, instead of having to avoid Disney criticism altogether. It's also great to see that they were actually allowed to use Mickey Mouse this time instead of Bart in disguise. The short closes out as usual with some great gag pieces as artwork underneath the credits. We have Lisa and some of the villains playing cards. We can actually see Lisa's hand, one of her cards being the Queen of Hearts, featuring again a picture of the Alice villain. We have Lisa and Ursula flying over the Grand Canyon in a car, in a reference to the iconic finale from 1991 MGM film Thelma and Louise. We have Hades appearing at Springfield Elementary as Lisa shows off her volcanic science project. We have Carr wrapping himself around and hypnotizing Homer just as he does with Mowgli in the Jungle Book. We have Lisa as a lion tamer as she puts her head in Scar's jaw while the rest of the villains watch on and cheer. We have Captain Hook giving Homer a wedgie with his hook. We have Lisa and the old beggar woman standing outside the Poison Apple Store, a clear reference to the Apple Store, and we have Cruella eyeing off Santa's little helper, perhaps contemplating a brand new coat. The short closes out once more with a shot of the princes forming the Mickey Mouse silhouette, reminding us all who's boss. This is truly a great little short, and certainly one that those who had issues with last year's should hopefully enjoy and have a little bit of fun with. I'm looking forward to seeing what we get next from the Simpsons and Disney Plus collaborations. And at that, I want to know what was your favourite part of the Welcome to the Club short, and what else are you looking forward to?
forward to checking out this Disney Plus Day. To keep up to date with all my Disney Plus Day and D23 Expo coverage, make sure to like and subscribe and follow the playlists on your screen. Thanks for watching.